my delicate dandelions, and welcome to another delicious episode of Hey Queen, with me, your host, Johnny McGovern. Today's episode is going to be dynamic. Our guest today is a shape-shifting glamazon who's notorious for his head-turning mugs. He's a Los Angeles legend and an Emmy-winning makeup artist. I'm talking about the incredible Glenn Allen. But before he transforms on out here, there's two of my favorite shapes shifting in the studio. It's my emotional support orchestra, Adam Joseph and Erica Tor. Hey, 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 queen. Oh my God. Goodness, uh, we are taking it to places I never thought it would go, and I like it. She went to music school, honey. What can I say? Yes, she did. Just a little vocal journey, that's all. Mm, a vocal journey. Now, I'm looking at the two of you, <laughs> and I am thinking your skin looks like it's <gasps> quenched by the sea. Touch oh. this skin, mm. honey. Touch all oh. of this skin. I wonder why that could be. <laughs> well, <laughs> the other day, I went over to visit Adam and Eric, and I said, what are we going to do today? We are going to have a family luxury La Mer facial. Yeah. I brought all my La Mer products. Now, this is not a paid sponsorship. I wish it was. La Mer, <laughs> send me the PR stuff. Come on. <laughs> um, but I got brought all my numerous products and potions, and I said, we're doing the La Mer facial today. There was a lot of padding mm -hmm. and massaging. Yes, and great. butterfly presses. Don't forget butterfly presses. <laughs> <laughs> Erica was scared that since Erica has just been washing her face with water for 30 years, um, <laughs> she was like, what will, what will happen with all these lotions and potions? And how did it turn out? Look at you now. It turned out great. <laughs> Who, it, who would have thought? You have a lot of dots all over your face. Is that from, <laughs> from the Le Maire? <laughs> no, just my artistic endeavors. Thank goodness. Well, speaking of artistic endeavors, we have an Emmy winner on the show today who is legendary for turning incredible looks. Hit it, Emotional Support Orchestra. Beat that mug, turn it upside down. Hey, Glenn Allen, she's the fiercest around. And we'll be back with Glenn Allen right after this very gay break. Our guest today is an Emmy winner and a drag makeup legend, sweetie. Please welcome the incredible Glenn Allen. Beat that look, turn it upside down. <laughs> Around. <laughs> yes, to the emotional support band. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Look at the sister and glowing. Yes, our psychic powers did work. This the color morning. story is working today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, can we just take a pause to do a slow clap to standing ovation for this look? Yeah. We won't stand, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Glenn, honey. Johnny. I knew that you would bring it, but you've gagged me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a new day, so we got to get go the extra mile. This is especially an for you. Incredible look. Thank you. My gosh, where's the inspiration of this from? What dimension is this look from? Right. <laughs> lots of dimensions and lots of decades yes. of inspiration. You know, my history is filled with so many artists, performing artists, music artists, um, and the more colorful they are, I think the more inspirational they are. Yeah, because we got a little disco diva in the face, Carnival, we, uh, an older, right. older universe. <laughs> um, you know, and a shout out to my, my drag mother, Keith Crary, who was one of the first Ringling Barnum and Bailey circus clowns. Wow. And you know, he was such a big fan of color, you know, and I was a big fan of Lee Bowery, of course still am, and Grace Jones and people like that, you know, so I just put a Boy George, even before Boy George, right, when he was a Blitz kid, mm -hmm. kid <laughs> you know, a club kid in London, I mean, he really turned it out, look it up, 
Yes, he did. <laughs> Erica, did you have a psychic color uh, thing going on when you made this outfit choice today? Yeah, I think I just, I plucked it out of the ether. I uh -huh. think it must have been flowing around. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, all right, well, Glenn, it's time to get to the tea. The tea. I want to talk about two of your legendary looks. Some of the looks that you're most famous for, though, really, the mm. Glenn Allen lookbook is very thick and very involved. But we're going to talk about two of your most famous looks. The first one being, now people wouldn't guess it if they're free seeing you for the first time right. in this interdimensional spectacular, but you are very famous for your dead on exactly right to the T, Bet Midler. Let's take a look at that. Wow. That's not a photo of Beth Midler, okay? That's a photo of Glenn yes. Allen as Bet Midler. Wow. 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 Now, tell me about the, the Genesis. Yeah. The Divine Miss M. Um, honestly, as a drag queen, first it starts there. First it starts with a boy wanting to wear makeup. And then it starts with you know, somebody inviting you into a drag show. And then it leads to, you know who you look like. And, uh -huh. then, and then you put that look on, and then it goes to the audience freaking out. And then it goes to, I'm not going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then it goes, I, I, it goes to, I need every look that she has. Right. So, and surprise, surprise, she has a lot. Yes, she does. So. You could do, I mean, you could do bathhouse Betty days. You bathhouse, could do uh, you for gypsy, the boys. You got gypsy. You got the concert mermaid uh, look. And of course, none other than Hocus Pocus, Winifred Sanderson. My God. Yeah, yes, your season. It's hollow. I mean, she's a woman for all seasons. She is a woman for all seasons. <laughs> Now, uh, people said you looked like Bette Midler, and then the f when the first time you did it, was it that good, or how long did it take to get no, that good? No, actually, it was that good, because when you have the face of that celebrity, here's the thing. Okay, first of all, DJ Wes is the one who got me on stage first as Bette Midler, and, uh, and he's been a, su a drag supporter forever and ever and ever, and so I've been working on and off with uh, DJ Wes for 20 years. Now, but I've been doing drag for 35, since high school, right? Yes. So in high school, I started doing little drag shows with my friends, you know, putting on a little dress. But what I really liked, here's the thing. When I went to a drag show, there wasn't that many, right? So I'm from the Odyssey days, um, which is a big club in, in Hollywood. And uh, also the Peanuts days. So there's another club, Peanuts, and they yes. had the best drag show called The Cosmetics. And that's where I was introduced to celebrity impersonators. Uh, and ones th that did Madonna and Cher and Grace Jones and Nina Hagen, uh, th some of my favorite 80s. And I was immediately attracted to that. You know, years later, uh, I performed with Viva, who was Madonna. And, you know, I was like, oh, you know, we're just chatting. And I said, oh my gosh, the cosmetics were just my favorite show to watch. And she said, nah. -uh. She said, no, no, you weren't watching. You were studying. Mm. I saw that look in your eye. It was so <laughs> funny, right? And I'm 16 years old watching these cosmetics. So, um, so impersonating was my first go-to. And I started with uh, Terry Nunn for Berlin, Del Bazio from Missing Persons, Susan and the Banshees, Grace Jones, Pat Benatar, people like that. Yeah. Okay, so this is a long time ago, right? Um, look them up. And... Uh, <laughs> So then it evolves. It just evolves and evolves. And I keep, you know, adding to the list. And now it's uh, Barbara Streisand, Liza Minnelli, um, uh, Annie Lennox, Amy Winehouse. Um, and it has been Bette Midler, though, for 20 years. I've been, Bette Midler has always been there. Yeah, oh my God, that Bette Midler. What's your favorite Bette Midler number to perform? My favorite Bette Midler song is Stay With Me. Oh, yeah. And that's from the movie The Rose. If you haven't seen it, she was nominated for an Academy Award for that, The Rose. Uh, and it's a great soundtrack, great music. And, of course, if you don't know the song The Rose, that, as a child, for many of us, when we heard that song, we immediately, like, our heart was, like, moved. It wasn't just music. It was an emotional journey through the ears. And, and Bette Midler is one of the only 
vocalists who can take you on that journey. Yeah. Now, has Bette Midler ever come face to face with Bette Midler? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. No, I, I, you know, I, we're on different coasts uh, right. most of the time, unfortunately. So, no face to face yet. Okay, here's the plan. You're gonna go Thanks. near Thanks. Bette Midler's house, Man. done as Bette Midler, every day for the next six <laughs> the months next until it happens. <laughs> come out, Dad, come out. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Um, <laughs> um, okay, here's another one of your most famous looks, the looks that made people go, who is she? Uh, let's take a look at the famous yeah. upside, upside down, down girl. girl, iconic. <laughs> Now, you uh, came up with the idea for this while singing and sitting in traffic. Yes, yes, I did. You know, and, and I'm a club kid, so back in the 80s, not only was I a celebrity impersonation because I loved the cosmetics and I loved that drag, um, but there was also Michelangelo uh, in that group uh, who, you know, again, was in that Lee Bowery uh, club kid uh, style. And I loved the club kids. And so I would just come up with different looks on the weekends. You know, I'd perform at the drag show and celebrity impersonation, and then on the weekends, I would just think of something fun to do. Um, it wasn't really a performance situation. It was like a weekend outfit. Um, and just crazy. And so I, I never gave both of those up. I always, they're always both so special to me. So this is more of a club kid look. Um, but nowadays, I do turn the club kid look into a performance because we do have more performance art. I mean, drag shows are great. Celebrity impersonation is great. Looking fishy is great. Um, but I also love the club kid aspect of a performance. So I make the look first for the club, and that happened to be that look I did first for Beardo Weirdo, which was a club thrown by the Boulay brothers. Yeah. Um, and I've been connected to them for, since dr early Dragula days. I was the first at the club, I was the first winner of being Miss Dragula. Uh-huh, no wonder. Years ago, years ago, <laughs> years ago. Anyways, and, um, but I digress. So um, this was a, just a club lick, and I, th I thought, you know, my, some club kids, they paint their lips upside down, and I'm trying to think of something silly and fun to do for the evening. And I thought, how about I turn my eyes upside down instead of my lips, because they do their lips all the time. And then, you know, it's LA, so traffic was uh, bad, and so, I spent enough time in traffic to turn the whole thing upside down. And by the time I got home, the whole thing <laughs> happened. Um, and that's where it was born. Now, here's the thing, too, with that picture. You see I have a daughter. When I got to the club, people were a little upset. Really? <laughs> <laughs> because they couldn't handle it. Yeah. They couldn't handle looking at me and speaking to me. And I didn't realize that it was going to happen. I didn't think it was going to be off put. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to give her a daughter. I'm going to make her a mom. Mm. And that way, she won't be so disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work, ladies and gentlemen. She's still disturbing. Yes. So I transformed James St. James into Upside Down Girl yeah. uh, for his tr j transformation show. And, uh, and, and it really was a worldwide phenomenon. Phenomenon, and then you know, and that I started that in 2000, sorry, 2013, uh -huh. and uh, and then it's been comp, it has been uh, copied worldwide. I'm sure it has. Yeah. Hello, children. Come 